So we have bred all these young birds. And welcome back to OC Avery. Um, so today in this video, um, it does mark the end of the breeding season. Um, we've got all of the adult birds separate from the breeding quarters now. Um, all the nests taken out, all the young birds separated. Um, and yeah, we've got all the, all the birds molting now. So we've got adults and youngs here. We have a couple of adult birds here. We have some uh, adults outside in the flight and uh, a, a new development on the uh, older bird shed. So before I um, show you around with the, uh, the, 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 the adult birds, which are now separate and all the young birds, we're going to take a look through the young birds that we've bred this year uh, and have a look at a couple of individuals and some uh, examples. Uh, and then we have uh, the, um, this week's eye catcher, so the bird that's caught my eye this week. Um, and we also do have a special mention uh, towards the end of the video. Um, so yeah, before I get into showing you all these, I want to show you uh, the newest development um, with the bird sheds. So we're back in the original breeding shed. Um, obviously you've seen here, that there's obviously no birds in this shed at this uh, the current time. Um, but this was, we had mules up here um, and we had young green finches in here. Well, we now have all of the cages painted. So we have uh, these three foot breeding cages here painted, these two foot cage, uh, breeding cages here, and then these four footers. And not only that, but we have um, a bit of a change to the uh, show cage and training wall. Um, so if you remember these, we had these cages here, were all down the side here, right down to below. And um, we've now got a bit of a change. So we've got another cage here, which is almost like a, a British native show cage. Um, obviously I would use this um, as a show cage normally. However, um, for those of us who keep natives and show natives, um, this shouldn't be straight. It should be curved. Um, so this wouldn't do as a suitable show cage um, to take to the exhibitions. But we now have these where these are, uh, simply come off the wall very quite easily and we have them on brackets uh, so we can have a bird in here we can put the birds in there and uh, have a good look which is something that we'll be doing uh, a little later so there we are that's that and we also have these cages painted um, so we do have some led strip lights which are uh, well they're messing up at the moment aren't they when i'm trying to film there we are Come on, okay. Anyway, so um, these are all painted now. So um, the back is all, all one color. Um, obviously the the, uh, the board here holding this branch would be ideal being painted. Uh, however, I'm going to see how it looks for birds in. Um, so yeah, there you are. That is those uh, large cages. We have the divider painted as well. And we come to this cage here. So everything is now painted, uh, which is quite nice. Um, we've got a much, much nicer surface here. Um, we've also got the flooring sorted. Uh, but yeah, so no no birds in currently. Um, sadly, this, I broke this earlier, but not to worry, I can fix that. Um, we've got ne like nesting supplies up here. So we all the external nest boxes, because we now don't need them. So they've been disinfected. Um, Clean down, so I, I bleached them first and then gave them a good wipe down. We've got all of the um, the fake Christmas tree taken down. We've got uh, food pots and things in there. They're all nice and clean, clean dividers, uh, more of that. And then obviously we, we come to where the, the feed are and medication. Um, and then also, if you remember when we um, had the chaffinches uh, in here. So this is now all painted as well. So a nice, a nice painted flight. Um, the floor does need some uh, easy bed putting down. However, I am thinking of changing the flooring slightly. So there you are. This is the um, the old original bird shed. 
uh, which you all which you all saw um, where we usually do film and yeah so there we are all looking much better much nicer um, not only just to film in but also uh, a better place to be keeping the birds so yeah there you are that is the latest development of the bird sheds so then we move to the three outdoor flights uh, where we have uh, birds separated now uh, only the larger finches so we come over here first in here we have the adult green finches um, and the adult chaffinches so we have uh, two chaffinch hens in here uh, a chaffinch cock and then we have three or four I think it's four greenfinch cocks and five greenfinch hens. We have a silver cock bird in here as well and a silver hen. Uh, so there you are, that is the adult greenfinches and the adult chaffinches. We then move in here, so we have the crossbills and the Siberian bullfinches. Um, so there you can see the adult uh, bullfinches. Uh, sadly, the last round um, was clear. Uh, so they're now separated into molten. We have a, a crossbill hen there. We have a young crossbill here. It's mother in the background, um, feeding. And then we have the father crossbill up here, the uh, the over year cockbird. So that's those guys molting out. And then we move here where it's a little bit more busy. Um, so in here, there are 17 birds, there are 16 young green finches, two silvers and a pied, and then there's also a young bullfinch there in the middle. Um, so these are from obviously several different pairs. Um, so I will be able to make up some unrelated pairs for next year, as well as birds that will uh, come for sale once the molt has ended. Um, so yeah, we're going to have a, a, a good look through all these birds outside in the flights uh, soon in the show cages um, but for now we're going to go um, into the uh, the small finch shed and take a look at those in the show cages before the large finches so the first bird we're going to look at is this normal red pole um, this is a young bird um, so a 2020 bird I bred uh, early in the season around May um, as you can tell this bird is almost fully uh, molted out completely now um, and we are starting to see some good quality um, good, good qualities on the bird so um, as you can see on the flanks once the bird steadies up a bit um, there are some great markings we're starting to see those three bars which is uh, something that we look for um, as well as not an overextended white up towards the bib and um, there is a slight bit which could do with um, obviously uh, being selectively bred uh, to make that less uh, less prominent and more more of the uh, brown color throughout the chest uh, extended towards the legs um, but overall I would say this is quite a nice bird um, and the bird, the bird obviously does need show uh, showcase training uh, but uh, due to it only just finishing the malt really um, I wouldn't want to be forcing that yet and stressing it out so yeah there you are that is the first um, red pole we're going to be looking at so normal we then look here to this cold cobalt I uh, bred so this is the only cobalt I bred this season uh, which is a shame as they are something that I do I do look to try and breed through most of my pairings. Um, it does look quite scruffy now, it's in quite a heavy malt. Um, but yeah, so we've bred three colour variants of red pole this year, that being normals, cobalt and cinnamon. Uh, so here is a young cobalt. Um, I can't go sexing it yet, however I would be already leaning towards this being a cockbird uh, due to its upright posture as you're seeing now. So we're now we come to this um, cinnamon red pole which I bred this year. Um, so I bred two this year and they are both looking uh, great birds already I must admit. 
um, and I, I do very much like them. Uh, so what we do have here is if you can see on the uh, flanks and the chest of the bird, um, rather than it just being one sort of um, colour tone of brown of the cinnamon colour, we actually have the two tone coming in. Um, so that's more of a lighter background um, with the dark sort of uh, strips uh, through the chest, uh, which is obviously something that um, is, is a very good and attractive quality towards the bird. Um, so I'm hoping that once these cinnamons have completely um, finished the malt, one of these will be definitely going on the show team, uh, as well as a cobalt, whether that be uh, this year's bird or an overyear bird, as well as a normal. Um, so I would say maybe perhaps the first normal uh, we looked at, which I bred this year, um, that's that's looking nice. But there are three other candidates for the, for a normal. Uh, if we're looking at a bird this year, or if we're looking at a, an overyear bird, where well, I do have seven normal red poles. Um, so one of those will be making the show team, whether that being uh, an overyear cock, an overyear hen, or a young bird. So here you are, that is a uh, cinnamon hen. Well, a cinnamon, yes, it would be a cinnamon hen actually, this bird. Um, its father was a cinnamon, its mother was an agat. Um, so this has to be a hen, so this is a cinnamon hen. So now we take a look at an overyear cobalt hen. Um, so please do bear in mind with these birds, uh, they are at their worst looking so far um, due to the fact that they're in the malt and have had uh, quite a, a busy breeding season. Uh, so I would say this is one of the uh, better examples I have of a cobalt. Um, we're seeing very little white coming up through onto the chest. Um, and that, that coloration extending way uh, well towards the legs. Uh, so there you are, that's a, a good look at a, a well covered bird. Uh, so this is a two year old hen. Um, however, sadly, she can't go to the shows as she does have a slipped claw. Um, so that would ruin the, the chances at show. Uh, but hopefully will be something I will breed off of uh, next year. So now we're looking at this hen. Uh, so this is a agate pastel, and I got pastel and red pole hen. So she's in uh, mid malt really now. So she is looking quite scruffy um, and quite a, a rough looking bird. Um, she obviously doesn't have many tail feathers coming through and uh, a, a, a cap and the round face is looking quite uh, quite rough at the moment. But I would like to show you an example of an agat, uh, but also a pastel red pole. So here you are, so I bred uh, four birds off her this year. So um, we have uh, two cinnamons, which we saw earlier, and two normals, uh, which we may have seen. I will have to check the ring records though. And then we're looking at a cinnamon um, red pole cock. So uh, this was paired to the previous agat pastel hen and is the father to the two cinnamons and two normals. Uh, I bred off a pair. So uh, as you can see, he's getting some uh, red coming through on his chest now. Um, I have got him on colour feed, uh, but also with him being now um, a flight of bird then uh, he will get, th get that red chest, uh, which hopefully should be enhanced by the uh, Carafil red uh, colour feed, which I'm adding to their water. So from the red poles, we move to the siskins. So this is a flighted siskin cock. Um, this bird wasn't used this year to produce pure siskins, but rather I bred uh, two siskin mules off uh, this cock, this cockbird. Um, so overall, I wouldn't say this is the best example of a siskin. Um, obviously, we do have to be mindful that this bird is in the malt at the moment, so will not be looking great anyway. However, out of the malt, this bird does lack a bib, which is something that we look for um, with the siskins, as well as uh, any real flank markings. 
Uh, so yeah, there you are. This is a flighted siskin cock, normal. We then look at our old, um, well not old, sorry, our uh, over year siskin hen. Um, so again, not the best example. Uh, we aren't seeing many markings on the chest. Um, so I, I wouldn't be saying that this is a great bird, um, as it isn't really. However, the cock bird she was paired to um, is a very good bird. I've just not been able to get him in the showcase. Um, and she has produced four young this year, which we will take a look at now. So this is one of the four young siskins produced from the hen and the other cock bird I have. Um, this particular example I would suggest is a cockbird, uh, just by looking at the coloration coming on its chest already, um, and a sort of a bit of a bib forming on the bird. Um, so we do have four, so I'm hoping that we will have at least one hen in the mix, um, who will be paired to the uh, siskin cock we saw um, two birds back. Uh, so we will have two pairs of siskins next year, um, as well as maybe some sort of siskin uh, hybrid. I am tempted to do a siskin mule again, so if that's something you would like to see, uh, please leave uh, your thoughts in the comments, um, and also any other mules or hybrids you would like to see me do. Um, so yeah, there you are, this is a, a young siskin. Um, so far, uh, I would definitely say this is a cog bird, so we'll see how it develops. And once through the malt, we'll take another look and uh, have, have a good judge um, at the birds and see who will be making the show team. So we'll now have a look at the um, Siskin mules I've bred this year. Uh, so this is the cock bird, um, obviously as you saw earlier, the Siskin cock we saw was the father to these two. Uh, so this is the cock bird here, he's midway through the malt really. Um, I've got him on carafil red colour feed so hopefully we do get uh, some orange and reds coming out on him as well as the yellows and greens. Um, so I'm hoping this will turn into a nice bird and will make the show bench. Um, I have had this bird on Switty, which is Goldfinch song, uh, so it will be interesting to see uh, how that develops and if the bird will sing. Uh, so yeah, there you are, that is a Siskin mule cock, uh, current year bird, uh, so that was a Siskin cock bird to a Satinet canary hen. And then a brief look at the uh, sister to that cockbird, that mule, uh, siskin mule cockbird. This is a siskin mule hen uh, who I bred this year. Uh, so obviously not not much uh, exciting with her. Uh, no great coloration, uh, but we do have some nice markings coming on uh, and a couple of wing bars. So it will be interesting to see how this bird um, malts out uh, into its adult plumage uh, but for now and um, she will be staying on for next year and um, as she will i will be pairing her back to the her brother the siskin mule cock uh, as a pair of feeders for small finches such as siskins red poles and maybe even mules so from the small finches then we move to the large finches so this is a young green finch uh, de definitely a cock bird from this year, which I've bred from the exhibition line. Um, the pair were for, bought from Paul Meek, uh, so we've got a 2018 uh, cock bird uh, with a 2019 hen, and they have bred um, eight or nine youngsters this year, uh, six of which I've got malting out uh, and basically on the stick so we only have six left uh, so this is a cock bird produced by the pair um, which is uh, a nice bird to be fair it's got the weight to it uh, however i would say this is a buff bird uh, but we will see how it turns out as it melts then we have a pied green finch um, so i bred this bird um, as, a la as a last clutch uh, from a pair I actually had in this aviary um, before I convert it into a bird shed. Uh, so that was a silver cock bird who carried pied to a normal hen. Um, so that pied did only have to be on one side of the parents 
um, to produce a visual pie. So this is the visual pie chick. Um, so this is now at about 35 to 40 days old. Um, so I am believing this bird is a hen uh, because it, the pie was from its father. Therefore, you would usually make uh, a young bird being a hen. However, um, no guarantees yet as it is quite complex with uh, pies. So we'll see how this bird develops, uh, but this will definitely be a bird I'll be keeping on for next year, whether it be a cock or a hen, uh, to breed into uh, probably an exhibition line of the, uh, the like the bird we saw previously, uh, to try and increase size and make some nice pied birds. So now we take a look at a young silver green finch. So this bird is the um, I believe the sister to the pied greenfinch you saw previously. Um, so this was, um, this must be a hen because its father uh, was a visual uh, silver with the mother being a normal uh, hen. So therefore it has to be a uh, young silver hen and any cockbirds produced from the pair will be silver carriers. Um, this bird is also the sister to the bird that won me the uh, Natives and Norwich group on Facebook breeding competition, first place on that. Uh, so I did win a, a prize, which hopefully we'll be seeing in a, a video uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, so yeah, there you are. That is a silver or an agat greenfinch. So this is a young Siberian bullfinch. Um, I'm unsure whether or not this is a, uh, a hen or a cock, but this is again, is about 40 days old. Um, so I do have one pair of uh, Siberian bullfinches. Um, they're, both in, they're both visual normals. However, the cock bird carries pastel. So if this is a cock, this is a cock bird, there is potential that this also carries pastel, uh, but only a 25% chance. So we'll have to see um, if this being a cock bird, we'll have to test it and see what uh, comes out. Uh, ideally, this bird, I would like this to be a hen as I can use it um, either on some more bullfinches, so I may get a yellow, a yellow cockbird for it, or a pastel cockbird for it, for example, um, or I may use it with a Norwich cock or even hybrids, which ideally I would be looking to either try a green finch cock with it or a crossbill cock with it. So we'll see how this molts out uh, and see what it turns out to be as an adult, which will ultimately decide whether it's staying or whether it's going, but also if it will make the show team. So now we have a look at the father to the uh, young bullfinch. Uh, so this is a buff bird, um, as you can tell by a very lack of intensive coloration of the red on the chest. Um, he also carries pastel. Um, so hopefully we will breed some pastels off him next year and get them to the sticks as I did this year but obviously uh, sadly didn't manage to get any to, uh, to the sticks so we don't only have the uh, one young bullfinch so far um, as for this year anyway hopefully we will get some next year or some more uh, so yeah there you are this is the Siberian bullfinch cock And this is the final species we'll be looking at today uh, for the young birds I've bred. Uh, so this is a crossbill, uh, a young common crossbill I bred this year. So I bred two this year and um, this is a young hen. Sadly, the young cockbird um, died tragically. So um, not long after fledging the nest, uh, either the, its mother or its father actually attacked both chicks. Uh, this one got away almost unscathed, just a slight nip on its uh, nostril. However, the uh, young cockbird had its leg broken in two places. Uh, so I did actually manage to bandage this bird up and got it to the point where it could um, almost use its knee, but was still uh, slightly disabled. 
and, and unable to to um, sort of use its toes as normal. Um, all was going well until suddenly um, the bird managed to get because of its bad leg. I don't think it had any uh, nerve endings left in its toes, uh, so it didn't feel when it actually got its leg trapped. And the bird sadly trapped its leg um, in some uh, netting. Uh, or put its, its leg through and couldn't pull it out and sadly died uh, hanging itself from its leg uh, which is a shame but we do have this one young hen so uh, the current crossbill numbers we have here are one cock bird to three hens um, so the plan uh, I, I don't like to obviously reveal too many secrets and leave them for you guys to see uh, however I would like your guys suggestions on this um, so this bird will not be used to breed your crossbills next year and I will be keeping it so what would you like me to, to breed uh, what would you like to see uh, this bird compared to perhaps a Norwich cock to make crossbill mules perhaps a red pole cock to make red pole crossbills maybe a siskin cock or maybe something else green finch either way you decide in the comments what you would like to see bred from this bird next year so i will need to know uh, as it finishes the molt as i will be pairing up all the mules and hybrids so let me know what you think and this is the final bird we'll be looking at today so this is a common crossbill cock, the father to the young hen you've seen pre you saw previously. And um, so I imported this bird in from Belgium into the UK in February. Um, after settling down quite well, I paired it to a young hen I picked up at Stafford, um, who was a previous year. So this is a 2019 bird, and uh, also the hen it was paired to is a 2019 bird, the mother of the young crossbill. Um, so this is looking quite a nice bird. It is in mid malt, so we are starting to see some good colours coming through. Uh, some very strong yellows and some almost coppered colours uh, coming on the flanks of the bird. So it will be interesting to see how this bird malts out but without any interference of colour feed. Um, so there you are, that is the last uh, bird we'll be looking at for today, um, specifically um, as they all malt out. So just like that we come to this week's eye catcher which is this bird beside me. So this bird is a bird we looked at earlier uh, which is a normal red pole. Um, so this bird caught my eye this week um, because of the coloration. Um, so so far you might be thinking well you know we aren't we aren't really seeing some great color on it you know it's just it's just shades of brown um however this bird does have some uh, real good show quality features which is the markings on the flanks um but also the bib uh, so i am very uh, liking this bird at the moment at least um so it will be interesting to see how this bird mounts out uh, as a co like a complete adult i imagine that this bird isn't far off um, ending the malt now as it was um, born in May so yeah there you are this that is this week's eye catcher a normal red pole okay so then we come to the special mention of this um, video this, this episode um, so that goes to uh, a guy by the name of Bullfinch. Um, so obviously this isn't the guy's real name. Uh, I believe his real name is Chris. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this is over Facebook. So the Natives and Norwich Forum and the Irish Native Finches Mules and Hybrids group. Um, so as you're seeing right now, this guy um, is very, very well done has bred a hybrid mule so um, the father of this bird was a siskin cross red pole and the mother was a white canary 
um, and he has ultimately managed to get two fertile eggs uh, of which one hatched and is now molting out uh, as you're seeing in the show cage um, so that is a red pole siskin cross canary so a hybrid mule as you may say um, so I have seen some questions on the in the comments of that uh, video and the photos saying what class was that bird going in a show um, so I believe that that bird would go in the in any other variant mule uh, class as it is half a canary so it would count as a mule the other half being finch but hybrid finch um, so there you are that is this week's special mention So then finally to end the show, um, or this episode or this video, whatever you want to call it, um, we've had a look through at the new uh, or the newly renovated breeding shed. So it's all nicely painted now. All of the cages are painted and cleaned down. Uh, so I will be moving birds in this week. So you will see in next week's video, uh, some of the birds that will be in there. Um, so I am trying to keep this shed here as a small finch uh, mule and canary shed really um, so you know there may be a few exceptions depending on what we're doing so I may end up uh, pairing the hybrid pairs in here or the muling pairs at least I'm not sure how many I'm going to be doing but we will have to see uh, how that happens uh, and as the birds have molted out and I've ch chosen what will be staying and what will be going uh, as well as bringing on some more, like new birds, some new blood um, and new colours. So we'll see what happens there. Um, we've obviously seen quite a few of the young birds today. Um, so if you're wondering, so I have bred 16 green finches in the 2020 uh, breeding season. I have bred eight red poles. I have bred four siskins, two siskin mules, one crossbill and one bullfinch. Um, you may be wondering what actually happened to the chaffinches because um, you may have seen the, uh, the previous uh, videos uh, that we had some young chaffinches, um, if not the pair on eggs. Um, so sadly I discovered last weekend um, that the pair had, well the hen, I had separated the cock bird, the hen had actually thrown both chicks which was a real shame. Um, Obviously that's something you can't really account for. Um, she was feeding them well and they did make it to about eight to 10 days old, I would say. Uh, so it was a shame, but I guess that's keeping birds. So uh, I don't like to obviously hide uh, all of the bad things that go on because I do like to give you a realistic um, sort of view on it. So you do understand that if something does go bad, you aren't doing anything wrong. Um, usually anyway um, and that we all experience these uh, troubles uh, in the in the bird keeping hobby but also in the native bird uh, keeping hobby and breeding the birds and stuff uh, they by, by far aren't easy birds to keep and breed uh, but they are very rewarding to keep and breed for definite so uh, it was obviously a shame to lose the young chaffinches but uh, stuff happens and um, I guess it'll just be a case of trying them next year perhaps um, unless I do move the pair on which I am considering um, so yeah there you are so I think we have a total of 30 birds I believe 30 to 32 young birds I've bred this year which isn't bad I bred eight last year which was eight red poles uh, four of which I still have now, which is two cobalts and two normals. I did breed a, an Isabel last year, so I do actually have an Isabel carrier cobalt uh, red pole, um, who did breed this year, but sadly I didn't get any co um, Isabels to the sticks from the, that bird. Um, but again, he will be here next year, so we'll have to see what happens there. Great, I had some uh, feathers in my hair. Yep, there we are. Great, got it. Awesome. Anyway, so that's it for this video. So um, please subscribe if you're new, um, like the video and share the video. So I will see you in the next one.